Hey, free to play gang, welcome back to another video. I'm so sorry, I didn't have enough time to cover the Infinity Tower because of just my current hectic schedule and all the other things that I needed to upload as well. So I truly apologize about it. I just completed Infinity Tower today, which is also the 10th of January. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at Infinity Tower level 8, which is also one of the flaws where most of you guys have issues with. So we're gonna start off with our relics. So here you can see all our stats here. Okay, so uh, these are stats along me and I mean you can just pause the video as and when, right? Because it's just... It's just a pre-recording. Lucas as well, and Clara. So what you might want to take note of is take note of their speed, right? Clara is plus 164, and I believe my Jin Yu Yao is like 140 something. So Jin Yu Yao is actually slow in Clara, but you realize that Jin Yu Yao always take the first turn, and that's because of the debuff that the floor has, which is Silent Void. At the start of combat, allies are silenced. So as soon as all my allies are silenced, Jin Yu Yao is going to gain a little bit of AP, which pushes her up to full AP, and then she's going to take the first turn. And of course, there is also Time Stop and Snow God's Fury. Snow God's Fury being if an enemy is attacked, they have a chance of freezing the attacker which kind of sucks which is why I need a Clara here for the immunity. So let's take a look at how this runs. So turn 1, yep, Jin Yao takes the first turn, removes all the silence effects. So the thing is if you do not have a Jin Yao, it's also fine. You can use Catherine. Catherine works exactly the same. Or there are other strategies as well which I'll go through. So Catherine works the same but Catherine needs to be the fastest as well in your lineup because she's not going to gain an AP movement that uh, Jin Yao naturally has. So that's one thing that Jin Yao has on top of Catherine. And obviously Jin Yao can land stuns as well. So you notice over here, we did land a couple of stuns, which is pretty good. Okay, so another strategy if you do not have Jin Yao and Catherine, right? You do not have both of them. The next strategy that you can use is to use a Clara and an AP pusher. So if you have either a Febreze or you have an Abigail, just let Clara take the first turn. Hopefully heal your, your AP pusher, right? Hopefully heal your Febreze or your Abigail. And then that Febreze or Abigail needs to take the next turn to push your Clara up to full AP so that your Clara can do a full team uh, cleanse. So that's kind of like the idea. But obviously you don't need to use Clara, you can use Hengri as well. It, they both kind of work the same way, uh, but I do feel like Clara is going to be a little bit better because of the immunity that she brings, and of course the AP pushing as well. So you notice that some of my Espers will, uh, as and when, right, you get frozen and all that, so just try to get rid of it with uh, Clara's healing or Hengri's healing. Uh, but like I said, Clara is going to be a little bit better because of the immunity buff that she brings. So that's basically it for the first wave. It's kind of simple, Lucas is actually pretty powerful here because of his typing, right? His wind typing is exceptional here and he lands stuns, he has AP control, a lot of good stuff on his kit right now. So at R6, he performs tremendously well, especially since his first skill can land stuns, right? As long as the enemy has uh, zero AP, his normal attack will land stuns, which is really good. All right, so let's just skip ahead a little bit and let's take a look at the boss wave. All right, here we go. So same thing, Jin Yao takes the first turn, removes all the silence effects. And right now, an issue that you notice here is my Long Mian. <laughs> His third skill is on cooldown, which is a huge bummer. I kind of screwed up here and I thought I was going to lose, but thankfully we did not lose. So it's very important that your long man has his cooldowns up at the start, all right? You need to land the AoE freeze right here, which <laughs> kind of sucks for us. But thankfully, right, thankfully we have Lucas in the house here and Lucas is going to be such a clutch play for us. So take a look at this. Lucas takes another turn because he absorbs AP on his third skill. He absorbs up to 50% AP on his third skill because there are five enemies here, which allows him to gain another turn to land the AoE stun. So that's pretty cool. So because of Lucas, right, we managed to land our AoE stun and that means we also have an additional AoE stun coming in the form of Longman here, which is perfect. But obviously a problem here is the Unas, which you cannot control which means that the enemies are all always going to be uh, immune, which is a problem, especially if stunning is your, is your strategy, right? But Lucas also doubles as an AP, uh, AP absorber, which is really good against the Unas here. So just really perfect setup here, I think. And as you can see, sometimes we are frozen, right? Sometimes we are frozen here. We can actually use Jin Yao to use her third skill to get rid of the freeze. I didn't really want to do it. I'm not sure why I didn't do it, but I should have, because at the same time, I'm able to remove the immunity as well and just transfer the freezing effect onto one of the other enemies here. So Jin Yao is actually really, really good for this particular fight. So you see over here, I decided to use my third skill, pretty good. So I transferred the freezing over and I removed the immunity as well. So that's that's how powerful Jin Yao is for this particular fight. So Jin Yao has come a long way and she is tremendously useful right now. So just try your best to AP control the Unas. And I guess just try to take out the first two Espers in front, which are the two Bonnies here. They are probably like the only two Espers that matter a lot. In terms of the Zhongnan on either side, they are not too much of a problem in my opinion. Because if you have Jin Yu Yao, the silence effect doesn't really do anything. And if they do cooldown reset you, it kind of sucks a little bit, but a lot of that can be resisted as well, which I don't think is that big of a deal. But obviously try your best to just keep all of them stun locked whenever you can, and you should be okay. So eventually you should look something like this, just slowly control them as much as you can. And obviously Jin Yu Yao with the, with the buff stripping is so key here. 
And yeah, just make sure that you get rid of two Bonnie's ASAP before they use their third skill and you should be fine because I think the Bonnie's third skill is kind of what screws you up a little bit because it gives them AP, it strips all your buffs and it resets your cooldown as well. So that really sucks. But anyway, that's about it, right? So done, that's it for the 8th floor. And obviously, I'm using Anesidora for the extra DPS. Although I didn't really talk about it, but yeah, Anesidora is pretty decent with her DPS and she doubles as a speed down debuffer as well, which synergizes really well with Longmian because Longmian's second skill, as long as the enemy has speed down debuff, his second skill actually reduces a lot of AP. I think it was like 45% or something like that. So it's something that is constantly overlooked upon because people just assume that Longmian is just a freezer and he reduces a little bit of AP, but that's not really the case. His second skill, reduces a lot of AP. So I guess that's it, we can just auto and we are sure to win. So that's about it for Floor 8. And I want to talk a little bit about Floor 10 because that particular fight might be a little bit difficult for some of you guys. So this fight is not hard per se, I wouldn't think it's, it's that difficult, but the problem here is whenever they take turns, which they will, their attack actually goes up. So yeah, as far as like Lucas and all that, their DPS might be quite dangerous, especially if you let them run. So it's very important that you control them. And what I found to be extremely, well, exceptional in controlling their AP is definitely using the Ira here. I feel like the Ira abuse is very important. So you need to combo with the, the Lomian a little bit because the, the AP control is very necessary. Now, another thing that I like to use over here, and I will just rewind the video a little bit, is to use Clara with Gabrielle. So what I notice is that Clara uses her third skill first to give my team the immunity because in this particular fight, whenever your allies attack the enemy, they have a chance of being frozen. So we need to stagger the immunity. So what you notice is that McClara uses her two turns immunity and Gabrielle, she is not going to use her immunity at the start. She's actually going to use her second skill, which uh, because she's on the zoo set, allows me to stun some of the experts here as well, regardless of the enemy's element, which is so powerful, right? So the idea is just to stagger your immunity and you should be okay. So you just make sure that you do that, you should be able to have all your controlling aspers uh, just landing all their debuffs as and when that is necessary. And of course, okay, this Bryson Gurman's buff over here is so powerful because it protects the wearer from debuffs which includes uh, stunts and all that. So you notice that a lot of my aspers are actually not frozen because of the Bryson Gurman's watch. And it's so essential that your Ira has the R6 because that gives an additional ally the Bryson Gurman's watch as well. So as you can see here, my Lomian also has the Bryson Gurman's buff. So both of these aspers are not able to be frozen. So the goal for this particular floor is to just get rid of all the ads first, just get rid of them and try to AP control Abigail as much as possible. If you have a Pritzker, he is also pretty decent, but I do not have a lot of room for Pritzker in this particular lineup. But a Pritzker is going to be exceptional in this stage because not only does he stun the rest of the other uh, Inferno type espers, he is also exceptional in controlling the AP of Abigail. So after getting rid of all the ads around Abigail, you'll notice that Abigail is actually super freaking tanky and that's where Gabrielle comes in a little bit because of her defense break, but you know, because of the typing and because of her resistance, it's not very easy to, uh, to land the defense breaks. And of course, Gabrielle's 50% proc chance, which matters a lot as well. But eventually, when you do land the defense break over here, you'll notice that her HP just starts to plummet a lot faster, even without using DPS Espers. So just make sure that you control her AP as much as you can. She might revive as and when, she might also throw her buff. If she does give herself the shield buff, then just try to strip it with the Espers that you have. So for example, Anesidora here is able to strip buffs. But of course, if you have better buff stripping options, like let's say you're using a Lucas, Lucas is also really good here. Lucas would be another ideal choice, right? And as you can see here, the enemy's Lucas has revived, but it doesn't really matter. We're just going to take him out ASAP and that should be fine. But we're not going to prioritize him all that much because we need to make sure that we control Abigail's AP as much as we can. The Lucas can do whatever, it doesn't really matter. We have a lot of cleansing, we have a lot of immunity on this team, so that's going to work. So that's it for the 10th floor, hopefully this video was informative for you and I'm sorry that I took so long to get this video sorted but I hope you guys enjoyed today's content, if you did don't forget to give a thumbs up, it really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now that's it, this has been Dairy Free to Play and as always I will see you in the next video.